1950s America is known for eating copious amounts of burgers, fries, and milkshakes. Well, at least that's what they want you to believe. A good burger paired with some french fries is an unbeatable staple when it comes to American food, but what if I told you that in the 1950s, you had that burger in Jell-O? Food is weird, and in the United States, we eat some things that are considered weird in other countries and vice versa. For instance, in parts of Japan, people literally eat wasps. Wasps. Remember those murder hornets we had right after COVID hit? Yeah, people eat those too. Apparently, they're a tasty treat. However, that's pretty normal to them. There's even a wasp festival where you can eat wasps and other kinds of insects cooked in a multitude of different ways. As wild as that sounds to us, our candy bars and sugary cereals are probably just as strange to them. This weirdness, though, is experienced mostly because of a cultural divide. Different opinions on things that are or are not odd don't stop at food. This is because our cultures are different. Food in the U.S. is thought to be pretty universal throughout time. We're a country derived of steak, bacon, potatoes, and bread rolls, right? Well, not exactly. If you live in the United States, even you might think some of the US food from the 1950s was pretty weird. Like this pie plate salad that's mixed vegetables and a lemon gelatin garnished with tartar sauce. Or this mayonnaise and gelatin cake that could be stuffed with fruit, vegetables, or fish. Or these sandwiches that you can't eat like a sandwich because half of the filling is on the outside. Or these tomatoes topped with bananas for some reason. Or this tuna and jello pie. Why does everything have jello? If you want to get ready for the holidays, check out this frosted ribbon loaf. You cut through its thick cream cheese frosting to reveal a delicious ham and egg filling. Oh, and there's a tomato cut into a rose as a garnish for some reason. Or this Christmas candle salad with cranberry jello topped by bananas and, wait for it, mayonnaise. Honestly, if I had a nickel for every weird jello creation I've seen make in this video, I'd have like a buck 25. So why did people use gelatin or jello for everything back then? Well, it wasn't because it tasted good, because it didn't. The reason is actually just as silly as jello. See, in the early 1950s, refrigerators were still pretty expensive, and since making jello usually requires a fridge, jello dishes were actually a status symbol. Yes. Jello. Actually, gelatin dishes have been around for hundreds of years, and until refrigerators, gelatin dishes were used to showcase wealth. However, in the 1950s, jello was really popular because fridges became easier to obtain by the middle class. This allowed a wide variety of people to enjoy creating this fun and easy to make status symbol. Jello molds were a cheap and easy way to make use of leftovers and other canned goods. This led to a surge in jello popularity and people just kind of experimented and had fun with it. Because of Jell-O's rise in popularity, cooks just kind of gave up and put some wild Jell-O dishes in cookbooks. Eventually, Jell-O molds with weird stuff inside were one of the most popular dishes in the United States. This fad lasted until the 1970s. I think that's about when people realized that there are other ways to eat their food than encasing it in gelatin. With that in mind, I found a recipe from the 1950s that I think might be the worst one I found. I cannot tell if it was actually popular or not, but I'm gonna make it and I'm gonna let you guys know how it is. All right, well, here we are in my kitchen and we're gonna make something called a lime cheese salad. And to get started with that, we're gonna need jello. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make the jello. And now we're not gonna follow the directions on the jello box because our recipe is a little different, but if you ever make jello, just follow the directions. It's pretty easy. But we're gonna boil some water. All right, now that we have our water going, we just gotta wait for it to boil. But while we're waiting for that, we're gonna go ahead and grate an onion because the recipe calls for one tablespoon of grated onion.
The recipe also calls for vinegar to go into the jello. So we went ahead and mixed our water and vinegar with the grated onion, and now we just need to wait for the boiling water. Cool, now that the water is boiling, we can mix the jello packet in. We're just gonna whisk that in there until all the jello has dissolved into the water. Now that that's done, we can take our hot jello water, put it in a mixing bowl, and pour in our vinegar, water, and onion mixture. And you know, give it a little stir. Now we're gonna take a half a cup of this and put it in our mold. This will harden and it's gonna act like a top layer for our thing. The rest will be chilled slightly because we still have to add a few things in it. But since we don't wanna wait that long for it to be mostly cool, we're gonna mix in some ice cubes to try to speed up the process. Now that we've done that, we gotta put it in the fridge and wait. All right, now that we've done our waiting, 15 minutes of it in Azkaban, our mixture is mostly cool. So we can take that out and add a cup of cottage cheese and a tablespoon of mayonnaise. We'll give that a good stir. And then we'll pour it onto our first layer, which is completely set by the way. Then we can put it back in the fridge and wait until tomorrow. Okay, now that it's tomorrow, we can finally finish up our salad. First, however, we need to make the filling, which is tuna, tuna salad. To make that, we need a can of tuna, a dill pickle, and of course, a tablespoon of mayonnaise. We'll put all of that together and we'll mix it up real good. Now, we can grab our jello mold out of the fridge and carefully detach the jello from the mold. Now that it is detached, the moment of truth. All right, see what, what had happened was we didn't grease our mold. So the jello just straight up stuck to the mold and uh, that, that happened. So if you decide to make this, you gotta grease your mold or if you use jello molds at all, you gotta make sure that jello doesn't stick to it. Gordon Ramsay would not be proud. All that's really left to do is to put the tuna salad in the middle of the mold and some salad greens as garnish. <laughs> a lime cheese salad. Look at this beautiful uh, thing. Okay, now we're gonna try it. I'm just gonna eat the jello part first. You gotta get some of that, some of that sweet. Oh god. Alright. It does. Cheers. Salute. I expected worse. I did too. But it was still horrible. <laughs> but at the same time, okay, because the first part, this part here, right, it didn't have cottage cheese. It had, it was just jello, water, and grated onion, and, and vinegar. vinegar. Yeah. The vinegar, it's disgusting, but it made the jello match the onion which paired it with the tuna. tuna. It was bad. It's, don't make this, <laughs> but, like, I, I want to believe that I can comprehend why they thought, no, I can't, I can't defend it. I, I tried. <laughs> I, I need to brush my teeth. <laughs> All right, and well, that's it for this video. Uh, that's how you make lime cheese salad uh, I wouldn't recommend making this because you know super gross